Zach, let's talk about uh, core accounts for Control Tower. What's new with that? Well, now um, you can actually customize your core accounts for Control Tower. Before you were locked into Control Tower in your first deployment when setting up the landing zone, um, setting up a bunch of different accounts for you. Um, this didn't work in all use cases. Some companies already would have their security account or their audit account um, set up and they want a single place for a login, for example. Um, and so now with the core account changes, you can actually delegate those accounts out and use your currently provisioned AWS accounts for things like logging or your security account. And so it's more centralized. You don't have to split your logs between two different accounts for different things, um, and it can be all in one place. That's great. I would say that opens the door uh, to a lot more possibilities for some of those larger enterprises that already have these well-established security and logging accounts. Now they don't have to collect logs from two different places, for example. Yeah, there's a much lower barrier to entry for Control Tower now with, with pre-existing infrastructure. There used to be limitations around importing accounts into Control Tower or overlaps of features. Um, most of those have been eliminated. It's very easy now to take an existing infrastructure that's set up at a customer and import it into a new Control Tower deployment. And how does this tie into the core accounts feature that we were just talking about? Well, you could take an existing security account, for example, and you could import it into Control Tower and then make that your security account of record for your Control Tower deployment. Excellent. So again, this opens even more possibilities for a lot of these larger customers that are trying to uh, adopt cloud and have Control Tower be that single point of governance for their entire organization. Mm -hmm.